Ciao friends and uh, welcome to my home office um, studio um, witchy room whatever you want to call it actually I share my home office with uh, my husband so it's um, it's pretty cool anyway and you're always seeing this side of it because the windows are there <laughs> um, some earlier videos I'm sitting on the other side of I'm sitting at my desk um, and you see uh, a different view at the back but I don't even know why I'm telling you this okay so maybe because I'm feeling a little out of practice so uh, let me start somewhere so um, my last video I think it was my last video I shared uh, Ted Andrews deck that I got and um, just lately I've been craving photographic oracles, uh, nature, photographic nature kind of oracles, um, photographic animal oracles. And I guess I'd been living under a rock that I didn't know that my, one of my favorite authors had actually made a tarot deck and two oracle decks and a rune deck, animal, animal runes by Ted Andrews, which um, I'm still trying to um, decide whether or not to get them um, mainly because um, I haven't touched my runes uh, in oh my god since the late 90s I still have them I still love them I just don't use them for divination at all and I don't know um, again they don't need to be fed you know they don't ask for anything. They just sit quietly in the cabinet where they live, minding their own business, so they can stay. All right. So uh, today's installment is going to be, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you some decks that I received recently that I'm pretty happy with, and none of them are new. One of them you already saw in a previous uh, video, and I'm thinking that I might just talk a little bit about them and then maybe do flip throughs. I don't know. I, I don't know where I'm going with this video. I'm playing with a rubber band. Uh, it's anyway, it's it's the weekend. Um, my week's been busy, I guess, like a lot of you, right? And I felt like recording a video because the daylight's good, but I'm feeling like a little all over the place like a little frazzled so first I'd like to have first a word from our sponsors the um, Society of Tarot decks are predictive and literal so I've been meaning for for a few months now to to share this little um, experience I had that uh, was very 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 literal so literal it was hitting me over the head it was so literal and I still didn't get it so last last year at the, around this time I had started uh, I, I had started a new job I had gone back I had gone from being self-employed to um, being employed by a company and it was a management position and I just wasn't feeling it it was a management position still you know slight you know kind of healthcare related but not really uh, in terms of what my day-to-day -day was but it was you know anyway and I just I wasn't feeling it so you know I'd be playing with my my cards at home and stuff like that and I would and you know you ask those questions it's like you know what should I be doing it's like or you know what do I need to do in order to um, find fulfillment like what do I need to do like what what work am I supposed to be doing and like you know those kind of questions are you asking yourself it's like what do I go what do I do uh, why am I so unhappy uh, <laughs> right so I probably should have prepared the card a lot of so I kept I kept pulling the same like you know drawing the same two cards when I would ask this question and it was maddening because of what the cards were and I'll show you I 
as soon as I find it. Oh my god, terrible. It was always the same card, so always the same grouping of cards that I would draw. And the same grouping of cards, I just, I'd get it, but I wouldn't get it. You know, my, my reaction was, yeah, okay, uh, but what? So I'll show you what this grouping of cards was. I'd be, I'd be drawing this card, Page of Swords, and I think, okay, fine. So like, you know, this card is just telling me how I'm feeling right now, or like, you know, what my thought process is right now. And that's, thanks, but no thanks. I already know. This also is a card that for me personally, the, the uh, experiential meaning of this card has always been a time of extreme anxiety, which of course I was having extreme anxiety. I was starting this new job, which I didn't think was for me. Um, and yeah, so there was that. Then there was this. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so maybe I was a little impulsive in accepting this position. Fine, I know that. I realize that, but you know, I want to get out there. I want to get out into the workforce. Um, not that I wasn't in the workforce prior, but I was self-employed for five years. So I was a little, you know, so I jumped head and, you know, feet first into this opportunity and uh, perhaps it wasn't for me. Well, it wasn't for me, but you know what I'm saying. Then this would come out and it was always this grouping of cards and it's like, oh. okay, so yes, I did, um, Figure it, figure it out. The truth is that um, I need. So, like you know, when, when I'm, I need some mental stimulation. That uh, I need a challenge. I need, I need my job to be a little hard. But it has to be uh, a certain kind of hard, not, not, um, not soft skills hard. It has to be technical skills hard to, to hold my attention. And then, every time I asked the question, what kind of, what, you know, what type of work should I be doing, I'd get this. Can Ming get, what, what is this? I'm asking, what kind of work should I be doing? What kind of work should I be doing? And I'd be getting this. And this, really, it was frustrating because it was crazy. I would, like, draw this card, like, every other day uh, in a reading. It would pop up. All, you know, these, these four cards would constantly be in my readings, my personal readings. Um, I'd, drop, I'd drop a card and it was one of these, all, usually always this. Trying out a different tarot deck, the Ace of Swords. I still have the image in my mind. It was a tarot deck that, that was briefly in my life. Um, it was the Mermaid's Tarot by Lisa Robertson. And I still remember what the Ace of Swords looked like because it's the only card I drew over and over again. And this is from someone who, um, and when, when it wasn't these, it was a Ten of Swords. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to show something. I'm going to show you something because it took me a while to figure this out. So, I didn't stay in that job that I that I started uh, in February. I left at the end of May. What I did was I helped I helped the company I was with through a transition. They had a um, accreditation that was happening, so I assisted them through that and uh, you know got them through it. Got the got the praise, yay! You know, good, you know, good score, great score actually. Not to brag, but I was. I was part of that group, so I was pretty happy to be part of that group. But I left. And then um, I did a, a quick stint in uh, clinical resource nurse or you know, cl education, right? The educational, uh, the CRN, the clinical resource nurse or uh, nurse educator, that kind of gig. That didn't last long. It was about a month. because another opportunity came up and that's who I'm with now which I will not divulge because it's confidential I'm not going to tell you who I work for but you know what I do um, what my occupation is this card 
continued to come up all summer long. I started the new gig uh, in August and this would, this kept coming up, this kept coming up, this kept coming up. And I was thinking, what the heck is this? Like, what does it mean? Ideas? Um, you know, there was, there was some other elements going, there was some other stuff going on, right? From one of, one of the em employers I was with briefly, I did, this did apply to them in terms of finding out the truth about a situation and that that was perhaps not quite the way it was portrayed so you know these did they did match also other things that were going on but this one this every time I picked up a different um, tarot deck just to flip through it or whatever it was the ace of swords that would come up the ace of swords would come up so the other day imagine now we're in February of 2020. The other day, I was at work, and part of my work is, uh, I'm a nurse, right, and um, part of my work requires that I use certain um, stock, certain materials for my job, certain props, certain, um, oh my god, what's wrong with me today? So me every day. I get in front of the camera, I don't speak English. <laughs> I'm claiming that it's only in front of the camera that I don't speak English. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so I'm at work and I'm holding an implement that I use the whole time I'm at work. Like this thing is constantly in my hand because it's what I do. You see it? Yeah. My question, what, you know, give me a give me a clue, give me a hint. Where am I going to find joy? And where am I going to, you know, where am I going to find uh, purpose? Where where am I going to work? What should I be doing? And if you happen to be a patient, this is probably what I look like. Or this is, you know, to my patients, this is probably what I look like. So, yeah. So this was my, this week's installment of the cards are literal and predictive. No joke. I wield these little guys all day long. Oh, and in case you've never seen one of these before, it's it, it, it's it's an IV. It's an intravenous catheter. It's pretty cool. I really like it. Oh, it's got a sheath on it. Now, of course, I'm not going to use this on a patient because, well, it's contaminated now. I opened it out of its package. Literal and predictive period all right no and that's not all they are but you know this has been my experience that they certainly can be they certainly have been and yeah all right so 15 minutes 14 minutes in and that was a really long commercial from our sponsor all right my last video i showed you i got these love them I love them love them love them and when I recorded my last video I hadn't received another deck that I had ordered which is this one now you must be thinking to yourself Ma, you said you're doing a depth year and the answer is yes I am doing a depth year but I, my depth year is not about not buying things my depth year is about um, making making the right choices when it comes to my purchases and and thinking them through and um, curating my collection because now it is a collection of cards of tarot and oracle 
and um, next I'll be moving on to um, going through my books and seeing uh, what needs to go, what needs to move on, and what I feel um, needs to be added. So I had this deck at one point. I had I, and well, I had it. What I did was I I had it. I thought it was really great. So I gave it as a gift. I gave it away as a gift. And then I got another one and I gave that one away as a gift because I really think it's a great it's a great deck for someone who is not into tarot, not into oracle, someone who's brand new and even someone who's not. And it's this old deck. This is the, this is an old timer. And I need to check the date on this one. This is the Power Animal Oracle cards. Practical and Powerful Guidance from Animal Spirit Guides by Stephen D. Farmer. It's a Hay House deck. Oh my god. And let me see what the year is on this one because I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, 2005. So it comes with a little guidebook that we've all grown accustomed to getting in the Hay House and you know this has a really nice nice box like what we've grown accustomed to by Hay House the backs of the cards are I love them they're a little kitschy and I'll do a flip through because and they're not they're not in alphabetical order but I don't think it matters that they're not enough they're not in order it's not like when you're flipping through a tarot deck and you know everyone wants to be on the same page and you're looking you know you start with the major arcana and then you go through the different suits this is an oracle and and it's it's not photographic completely for instance this this is a painting that looks like a photograph this is a photograph but it's it it captures what it is I'm looking for, what I've been craving in my oracle decks, for my oracle decks. I think it's it's right in line with my um, Nature Speak oracle in terms of energy. I love turtles. I love animals, but and I really, I truly love this deck. Uh, so much so that I've had it twice before and gave it as a gift. I loved it that much because I like to share things that um, I'm really, I really enjoy. Like when I have to think of oh, a birthday present for someone or whatever, and it's uh, short notice, and I'm thinking, okay, what do I really love that I think this person would like? And there we go. So some are straight photographs, some are uh, paintings that are quite realistic. Um, there's some digital mini photo digital digital photo manipulation, photo digital manipulation. You know what I'm saying, right? But not not to the extreme that uh, some of these Hay House decks have gone, right? I love that it has the keyword, it has the name of the animal, the keyword, and then a key phrase at the bottom. Um, I think it's a really nice mix of these. Um, I love these, I just love the images. And I love the energy of this deck. The cardstock is uh, standard Hay House cardstock of, you know, of the glossy ones. But they weren't all stuck together when I got them, which is great. They're a bit thinner. It's actually a nice cardstock. I can't, I can't tell you what it reminds, you know, which deck it reminds me of. But it's, it's not a thick, glossy cardstock. It's not like Schiffer or some, uh, some of the other... Uh, earlier Hay House decks. Uh, sorry that the focus is not really uh, stupendous. At least to me, looking looking at the image, it doesn't. The focus doesn't seem very, yeah, very nice, very stupendous. I like how the, the you know the borders don't bother me. I do like how some of the art 
comes out of the borders. It's a really neat effect. Oh my god, I love this one. Of course I do. Porcupine. I learned two weeks ago from Facebook. It was on my Facebook uh, newsfeed. Someone had posted a video of porcupine and its little porcupet. I learned two weeks ago that a baby porcupine is called a porcupet. I freaking love that word now. I keep trying to use it in a sentence, which is a little awkward. There's not many opportunities to talk about porcupets. I don't know, I, I love, I even love like, you know, this weird mustard yellow uh, border. I think I love the borders because how a lot of the images go past the border. There's something, I don't know, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the earlier, uh, I think my medicine cards was my first animal deck and then this was my second. So I'm pretty happy to have it back in my life. Uh, this one's staying. Also, I had an interesting, um, interesting experience. Like you know, like we talk about cardstock and whatever, and and for the most part, um, I know this is completely off topic because I'm showing you a, a hay house deck. For the most part, I've had like, you know, good experience with Llewellyn decks. Like my Raven's Prophecy deck was from, you know, a, f a few years ago. And that has beautiful cardstock. It's like, it's thin, but it's flexible, it's smooth, it shuffles and makes that nice riffling sound, you know, when you, when you riffle it, beautiful. It has a nice heft to it. It's not cardboardy at all. So that's, that was my, I think I was my first Llewellyn deck. My second Llewellyn deck was the Anna K Tarot. That too had that nice, hefty, um, solid, but thin uh, card stock, flexible, beautiful. I had edged it in black. I didn't quite, it wasn't a deck that I quite connected to uh, since I got it. I had it for a few years. I finally ended up uh, swapping it. I traded with someone and uh, one of the decks I traded was by Anna Kay. Then I thought, oh, I'm going to get a new one because after I traded it away, I suddenly missed it. And I thought, well, I don't, I wanted, uh, you know, the reason I had it was because I wanted a tarot deck that was, that didn't rely on symbols. That was a little more, um, as Don Michelle put it, the human experience. Uh, from Boho Tarot. She did a video recently which made me want to get that maybe get that deck back or I had already ordered it because I was missing it. Anyway, whatever. The, whatever the reason is, I ordered a new one from Amazon. I receive the Santa K and, I, and it's in the same flimsy box and that's fine. And the book where they put so much into the, you know, the beautiful uh, rubbery cover of the guidebook and then I pick up the cards and they were oh my god they were terrible it was cardboard they the cards were cardboard they weren't the beautiful card stock of the Anna K tarot that I owned these were cardboard and the best way I could describe it is that when I held the cards the edges felt hot in my hands and it's um I know it's kind of a weird description but I don't know how else to describe it they just felt terrible um, that when I went to shuffle them, I could see already a little bend in one of the cards and I'm going, what is this shit? So there's, there's a run of Llewellyn decks out there that I think some of us are getting and some of us aren't because my hidden realms, uh, my tarot, of the, not hidden realms, my tarot of the hidden realm, uh, that card stock is quite nice. And it's very similar 
to uh, it's not like my raven's prophecy that card stock uh, i've never i've never seen it again um and i i'm i'm guessing i'm betting that if someone went out today and got themselves uh a raven's prophecy tarot um, it, it's probably going to be a cardboardy kind of terrible card stock like what i got in the anarchy anyway that one i sent it back that one um, the same day I received it, I opened it up. I felt that terrible card stock. I, it wasn't my my original Anna K, and it was a mass market one. Like I said, by Llewellyn, had a nice heft to the card stock. You know, like where it's like it slides and it's, but it's not too slippery. And it and when you shuffle it, you know, hand you know, hand over hand shuffle, it has a nice it 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 it, ha it has heft, right? This was shit. I sent it back. So now it's like I figure, well, no, I'm not going to take a chance. I kind of regret trading my Anna K, but not really because I got, you know, uh, that was part of a trade that I got something I really wanted. So I don't really regret it. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? It's like I regret that it's not the same quality anymore. And I'm thinking there's a whole bait and switch thing going on. So what is it like the first, the first printing they put it on the really nice card stock, and then after that they put it on the shit card stock. I ask you this: You're watching this video. Do you have an opinion about this? Do you have an, Do you have any experiences with this, where the first, you know, the same the same deck, you order it and it's beautiful, and let's say you pass it along and then you want to get it back, and you order a new one and the packaging is all the same, the ISBN is all the same. Um, you open it up, but the card stock has gone down market. I want to hear from you. Okay, so. What else did I want to talk about today? So I showed you my Power Animal Oracle cards. There's another one I got. And this I have to thank Adrian Leah because I think it was Adrian Leah that mentioned it and someone else, oh my gosh, it was when I talked about my Nature Speak Oracle that I got, which uh, I may or may not do a flip through. It's not in order. This, this actually has a little bit of a system, so I don't know. Maybe I'll have to put it in order before I, and I'll do its own flip through. Or, <clears throat> anyway, I'm getting all discombobulated. And it's um, it's another oracle by Ted Andrews, and it's called Feathered Omens and Messenger Birds from the Spirit World. I took a chance, um, because I'm guessing it's out of print. I took a chance on Amazon Canada and ordered from a third-party seller, that, but shipped by Amazon. Um... A used copy they had good they had good feedback and I'm thinking well if it turns out if they end up sending me just the book I'll just return it right and oh my god no one was more pleasantly surprised than me yesterday when this arrived first of all this is I'm pretty sure this is from the early 2000s so let me check the date before I show you the packaging which is incredible. 2009. Okay. 2009. Still. This is by Dragonhawk Publishing out of Ch uh, Jackson, Tennessee. And it has a ma magnetic flap opening. Isn't that incredible? Ooh, look, it's got a little... I'll have to wipe. It has a U on it because it was used and came in perfect condition you know just um it looks like the book was open you know it was used a couple of times like you know or not even no 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 look look at the spine and the cards come pa pack it like you know they're like like this or they came that way and when i received it yesterday i did my whole ceremony of wiping the outside and then the inside with my you know, with my baby wipe and a little bit of uh, Florida water and um, you have to be very careful like you know it, it's because it's a glossy cardstock I was able to do that and and you know I do the swipe and then right away I dry it it's a whole system and it just wipes all that uh, previous energy like residual energy from other people or dust and all that stuff so it's you know, it just, it feels like mine after I'm done that, that whole uh, procedure. So 
I'll do a flip through. Okay, they're adorable. Um, at the top is the name of the bird, and then that uh, below the the image of the bird is um, a key phrase. And I drew one card yesterday, and the guidebook was. Um, it's really interesting the way the guidebook works with it too. I love it. I absolutely love it. And again, just like um, nature speak, is, is that terrible? I'm sorry. It's terrible. Just like my nature speak, it's um, photographs. And these are all photographs. Now I'm anxiously awaiting. I did. Um, I did order Animal Wise Tarot. Um, Animal Wise. Yeah, Ted Andrews Animal Wise Tarot, a first edition from uh, Evil Bay. So I'm anxiously awaiting its arrival. And yeah, you know, I guess uh, I've really. Um, I know taste change, right? But for the time being, um, and and maybe not even for the time being, because I've always been drawn more to these kind of uh, art decks, right? With the photographs. As long as it's not people, I don't want people. People have to, it has to be an artist rendition or something like that, or um, I don't want photographs of people I don't know that may look like people I know, and then it irritates me. You know what I'm saying. And I didn't realize I was such a bird person. Okay, I know. I realize I'm such a bird person with my uh, friends here. And uh, Okay. But I didn't realize I was such a bird person until I flipped through this deck last night. And pretty much squealed. And then lovingly wiped each card front and back, and then, and then you know, polished it, like dried it, dried it to make sure they didn't leave any moisture on the card, and and then you know did this, I did the same to the inside and outside of the box and the guidebook. So like I said, it removes all residual energy from other people, from dust, from neglect, whatever and they just feel like mine. That's one way that I clear um, a used deck. Another way, if, you know, if, if it really, if the, if, the, if the item, like the deck, uh, feels heavy, the energy's heavy, then I just bury it in salt. Five minutes, done. Salt is uh, quite the purifier and it works fast. For me, uh, I'm not a uh, whole uh, moon cycle on the altar kind of person. Um, wish I was, but I'm not. I'm buried in salt, zap five, you know, ready in five minutes, and uh, we're ready. You know, give it a wipe, and we're ready, and uh, we're ready to roll. So I don't know if it's out of print because I live in Canada and Amazon Canada is a little, what can I say? Um, something will show up on Amazon Canada like it's like it's rare and it's like double, triple the price. And then you go do a little research and you find out that it's still available everywhere else for a lot cheaper. So that's my feathered omens, messenger birds from the spirit world. I'll give you a, and the cards are in perfect condition. Look at this. The edges are clean. So, um, I 
This is what the guidebook looks like. So for each card, there's a write-up. There's about a page and a half-ish per card. Um, it also has reversed meanings. If um, I don't read, I don't read reversed, whether it's tarot or oracle. I read the card uh, in context of what other cards are around it. So I kind of I read reversed, but. It's not the physical reversal of the card that triggers me to look at the reversed meaning. Um, it's it's position near other cards and the context of what's being asked. That just into you know intu intuitively, instinctively, I know whether I'm looking at the upright uh, meaning of a card or the reversed meaning of a card. So that's my feathered omens, messenger birds from the spirit world, and I don't know, I'm just loving, I'm just loving these, and I can't wait to receive my animal-wise tarot, and I'll be showing you that when I receive it. Also, um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to get the um, Ted Andrews animal runes, um, mainly because Amazon Canada looks a little sketchy, that uh, listing. And um, although I'm going to check the book depository to see if it's on there. Um, yeah. So that's it for me for this video. I might record another one um, this weekend. Mm. I want to show you. I put my t-shirt in the thumbnail of this video. I think that's what I'm going to do. But this, I love my new t-shirt. This was a, this is a gift from my friend Kevin. And, uh, it's very soft. I'm loving it. It's got a nice soft cotton, you know, nice and cozy. Thank you, Kevin. And, um, yeah, so that's it for me for right now. Uh, I'm wishing you all a beautiful day. Bye-bye. Oh, and thanks for hanging out with me because I really appreciate it because if um, if you're not there, then I'm just talking to myself, which is what I normally do. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.